So let me talk about this endocrine system. Now I got a bunch of things you can't see up here that they're there for my, my edification so that I'll be, I'm now addicted to using the pointer. I got an endocrine system, a collection of glands, all kind of glands, all over the body. They carry out a wide variety of physiological processes that are absolutely critical to our survival and our experience as human beings. What we feel is the experience of being alive, the human experience. It's producing these chemical messengers that you know well as hormones. Hormones, what is that? It's like neurotransmitters in the sense that it is a set of chemicals that provide communication between areas of the body. Neurotransmitters primarily are communication within neurons, but we know that neurotransmitters then are also um, exuded onto muscle fibers with acetylcholine to create movement, right? So you're getting communication from up here to outside the body through a messenger system. The chemicals then, here we're talking about hormones, regulate things like metabolism, growth, sexual development, so going from prepubescence through puberty into maturity, right? And we have an endocrine gland that releases hormones directly into the bloodstream where it's transported everywhere, but only seems to affect the target organs and tissues. It's a smart system. It knows where it's going and it knows what it's doing somehow. That's stunning if you think about it. It has an ability to function with great specificity. Thank you. Text, 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 don't talk. Pituitary gland. That's the master gland. The master gland, wow. That sounds stunning, doesn't it? Pituitary is the master gland. It secretes, why, why is it the master gland? Because it has so many hormones that it secretes that cause cascades of action to begin. So a lot of what we're talking about begins up here in the pituitary. It affects almost all cells and physiological processes on a daily basis. It's a stunning influence from this little area of the brain, right? Can you imagine what would happen to hormone regulation if it ceased to function? And what would then happen to the person depending on what hormones are affected? It could be devastating. And then you go down and you look at this and I got that little asterisk beside it. Why I got that little asterisk beside it? Because remember them four Fs? What are we talking about? We're talking about feeding, eating. Well, that's related to digestion and metabolism. We're also talking about fight or flight response and we're talking about sexual arousal or sexual desire, which is a process of mating, which procreates the species, which makes more of us. Without it, we don't exist as a species. It's one of the reasons Freud focused so heavily on sexuality. He wasn't just a dirty old man talking sex. He was talking primarily about the drive to survive of the species, which is a very different thing. And we'll talk about it extensively. So you got the hypothalamus that has releasing hormones that turn things off and inhibiting hormones that turn things, uh, back, uh, turn things on when they release and then off when they come back in a negative feedback loop. So if we're looking at that fight or flight response, you got the hypothalamus releasing corticotropin releasing hormone onto the pituitary, which then releases adrenocorticotropic hormone, which goes to the adrenal cortex, adrenal, so you know renal, and then that's going to release cortisol in addition to other things like epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine, noradrenaline, where the release of those is going to come back to the brain and be read by the hypothalamus and say, turn it off now. Optimal levels have been reached. That's stunning. So you look over here and we're talking about the hypothalamus, pineal gland, pituitary gland, thyroid, intermediate pituitary. The thyroid function is so integral to what we do that if it has a lack of function, hypothyroidism, it produces symptoms that look exactly like depression. So if you're diagnosing depression, you would want to be very careful to screen out potential thyroid problems. It's not likely to be that, but if it is that, that's fixable by other means. You don't use therapy and antidepressants to fix that. You use either surgery or medications. And these are just some other ones. Guess what? Hold on just a sec. You still got two minutes. I'm gonna keep my promise. That's all the information for your test. Don't take it as an easy test. Go home, study everything I focused you on. Look up in your book all these topics. Study hard and you will do well. I never say good luck before a test because your performance on a test has nothing to do with luck and everything to do with preparation. Come see me this afternoon if you want to learn how to study and I will tell you that. Test anxiety, y'all have a wonderful afternoon. Knock that test out, make us all proud.